my name's Linda with Gerald, my husband and I, we founded Ashtanga Yoga Paris. <laughs> I want to tell a little bit about my story of how I found Ashtanga Yoga. So in 1995 I had a car accident and I was in physical therapy and I ran into a friend of mine who was coming back from a yoga class and it just kind of clicked, oh that sounds interesting, a yoga class. So I, I asked her where it was and I asked a doctor that was taking care of my physical therapy if it would be okay if I take a yoga class and he thought it was fine, he spoke to the teacher and I started doing these very gentle Hatha yoga classes. I was going every Sunday morning religiously, this was my, my Sunday morning for a few months when one of the teachers that also taught at this center, her name is Diane Bruni, she said, Linda, you need to try Ashtanga yoga. And I was like, oh, Ashtanga, you know, every time they open that door, all the sweat and steam comes out of the room and it kind of grossed me out. I'm not really big into physical exercise. And she's like, no, 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 you have to try, you have to try. So fine, I tried the class and it was a little bit too advanced for me and everybody seemed to know what they were doing except myself. So after the class she comes up to me and Diane, she was very energetic and very sweet woman and she's like, so how did you like the class? And I just said, oh, I hated it. And she's like, oh, you just have to try again. And so. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'm not getting out of this one very easily. So I did. I started going to her classes more and more. And then she invited me to her home where Danny Paradise and Ron Reed, who's my teacher now, they were doing a private practice together and they were doing advanced series. And so it was just um, Ron, Danny, Diane, Danny's girlfriend at the time, and myself. And when I watched them practice, I was astonished. I could not believe that people were able to do this who weren't in the circus or gymnasts. And the, the smoothness of their breath and their movements, it was, it was fascinating to watch. So then after that, I was, I was hooked. I was, okay, I need to do this practice. There's something about this practice. So um, slowly, I, I started just practicing once a week and very slowly I increased where I ended up. Before I know it, I'm practicing daily. And I moved to New York City and I started um, practicing at Eddie Stern Shala. And again, I just stayed with the practice. And the thing with this practice that I found most astonishing is how you change when you're not expecting change. You know, you you go in there, I went there to help some of my ailments from this car accident, but I ended up reforming myself from the physical level on the body um, to mental and spiritual and emotional levels. So the way you deal with other people in your life changes, the way you notice what's happening in the mind changes. And what I found is that on the mat, and in your life there's a similarity so how you respond to the yoga practice is how you respond to other situations in your life so for me on a physical level it ended up changing it, it certainly it helped my recovery from this car accident but it also helped with some other things that I'd been dealing with since I was very young I'd had migraines since I was 12 years old and I was on a daily migraine medication and every doctor I went to, many doctors and nobody knew why I had migraines so they just gave me this medication, you take it every day and you avoid getting migraines. And after about a year of doing this practice, I didn't need the medication anymore. I still get some headaches from time to time but nothing, nothing compared to what I had before. 
and I had also had a thigh, my left thigh and my left big toe had went numb in my early 20s. And I went to, again, I, I had, you know, I had brain scan, CAT scan, um, to specialists, and in the end, all these exams, they were just like, oh, oh there's nothing wrong with you. So I was like, okay, well, I'm like 24 years old and my, my body's going numb. I guess it's not something to be too concerned about. And I just ignored it and it stayed like that again until about a year, year and a half after practicing. Slowly, slowly, I could start getting the feeling back in my left thigh and in my toe. And now I don't have any of those problems anymore. My circulation is, has improved. 150%. So um, there's those kind of benefits that I've received, but um, it becomes more subtle. So at the very beginning, it's very physical kind of benefits, but as you practice and practice, you start to notice more refined benefits. So um, it could also be how you eat, any of your habits you have through your life, you start to see them and you start to notice why you have these habits. And when you know why, then you're able to work on changing them. But in a more organic way, they come, the changes come naturally, you don't have to force it. And so anyways, that's why, some of the reasons why I decided to become a yoga teacher because I had been working in the fashion business and it was great. I loved my my career in fashion, but um, I really felt like I needed to share this, this part of my life that um, was becoming more and more important with others. And this practice that changed my life in so many ways, I felt like this, this needs to be spread. More people need to hear about this practice. And people like me that um, kind of came to yoga hesitantly, I would say. You know, I didn't, um, I didn't, I was a little afraid, I would say, of the, the whole world of spirituality and yoga, but it, now, now I understand it. Anyway, so, yeah, so to try and bring this to, to other people, we decided to build this yoga center with uh, Gerald and teach this practice and also build a community. So in the middle of this big busy city, it's nice to share time with people who have a similar lifestyle and similar morals and goals and uh, similar yoga practice. Um, so what is Ashtanga? So, Ashtanga Yoga, it's, it's sometimes called Ashtanga Vinyasa Yoga. It's a traditional form of yoga that was taught by Patavi Joyce in Mysore, India. And the way it's taught traditionally is that um, you, everybody practices in the same room together. So everybody is, it's almost like a, a private lesson, a one-on-one -on -one lesson, but in the group atmosphere. Sometimes it's hard to do your yoga practice alone at home. You need the energy of other people just to keep you motivated, right? So um, traditionally, Ashtanga is taught in this way, where everybody's working in a group together, but each individual is doing their their own practice. So um, one person will be maybe practicing an advanced practice, another person is practicing a beginner, and then everything in between. And in this way, first of all, you do what you need for your body. You don't do what the teacher is telling the group to do. So each individual is practicing what they need. And then also because we're working with our breath in this practice, you're, you're moving with the rhythm, rhythm of your breath. So when everybody's practicing individually, then you're able to do this. You're able to move on your own breath and you start to become more internalized. So the more and more you practice, the more you notice what's happening inside you. When you're in a group class, you're listening to what the teacher is telling, so you're more outside yourself. So we believe this is really the ideal way to practice, but 
at times maybe this can be a bit extreme for new people. So we also have lead classes where the teacher guides the class, everybody works together, and you just follow the routine. And so for some people they feel that it's easier for them to do this, and then eventually maybe work into a Mysore practice. And we also have beginner's classes which we break down the postures in little pieces that the beginner can understand what they need to be doing with their body in the practice. Um, we also have what we call a vinyasa class, which is on. It's based on the same principles as ashtanga, except for we change the routine. So every week we're doing something different. Um, it's it's more it's invigorating, and I would say it's more fun in a way, uh, where you're experimenting with different postures, and you don't know what's coming next. Um, so yeah, it's kind of like a dance, you know, working with the yoga in a in a form of dance. And also every Sunday we have a community class, which is given by our teacher trainees. So the the reason for this class is to for two reasons. One, our teacher trainees can learn to teach, you know, when when with with real students and also there's some people that have maybe aren't able to pay for the regular class so this class it's five euros a class so it gives the benefit of those who want to do yoga but can't necessarily afford to do the yoga so it gives them an opportunity to come to a less expensive class every week um, and so Obviously, we do a teacher training annually so to form new teachers or for those who just want to go deeper into the understanding of the yoga rather than the, the regular classes where it's a limited time. In the teacher training, we can break down everything, give more information about the asana, the actual physical postures, but more information also on the philosophy and the history and anatomy and other parts of the yoga. Um, we invite our teachers to Paris once a year, Ron Reed and Marla Minakshi Joy. So we invite them and they do workshops here in Paris. And we, we also hold, we also invite some other internationally known teachers every year. It depends on the year and there's different teachers. And we, we ourselves, Gerald and I, we we also do some one week or two week workshops for those who maybe aren't ready to do the full commitment into a teacher intensive, but are ready to give one week to um, commit to their yoga practice and go deeper into the, the knowledge and the experience. And we also try to help the, the world community by having some charity events when when possible so I think uh, that's that's basically what we do here but one thing we wanted to say that um, if we Gerald and I are the founders of the center we couldn't do this all by ourselves that there's other people that really help make this center and so for sure our teachers Ron and Marla they give us so much inspiration and they teach us new things every time we see them, which we try to relate to the students as well. And also Gleb. <laughs> want to thank Gleb because he's the one filming this and he filmed all our podcasts. And um, Stina, who's introduced us to Gleb <laughs> and has really tried to uh, help us spread the word of this yoga practice and um, Allison who also has helped us spread the word of this practice by getting us in touch with different types of people and Myra she's the one that does all the work for the computer and any problems we ever have on the computer so we want to thank those people that have been very helpful to us and very generous extremely generous and um, 
and then the students, because if we didn't have students, we wouldn't be here. Okay. Thank you. Now it's